We've been trying out a few builds for the 2.4 PTR, and so far, the one that has honestly impressed me the most has been the high-end Throw Barbarian. While this build may not be quite as solid in terms of standard progression, since you are still very weapon-based, and rune words will generally be better for difficulty smoothing, the Throw Barb offers some interesting mid to late game build options that kick in when you start getting access to the exceptional and elite throwing items. Now, before there's nitpicking over the weapons, over on Twitch we tested out a couple of them, and then off screen I tested out a handful more. And overall, the unique throwing weapons felt solid, pretty much all of them. And I can think of a few good rare item combos that would be fun too, you just need to adapt your necessary attack speed to keep the stream of steel flying. As far as the combo I liked best, I would say War Shrikes felt the most natural to use. Thanks to their raw speed, and even in spite of the current bug with Chance to Cast in 2.4, they still felt good to use, and I can only see that getting smoother as they fix the bug in question so it stops draining mana. Now as far as replenish rates via double throw, I wager we'll see them nerfed a bit, so things like Gimmer Shred will probably stay relegated to support, and even without that weird replenishment issue, I would still only use them against physical immunes. That said, the unique weapons all felt good enough as I said earlier, and if you end up going with rares, look for damage, speed, and replenishing affixes for optimal feel. Chances to cast amplified damage, skill bumps, and attack rating would probably be the next in line. Now as far as the rest of our gear, I went with speed is king mentality, though as you switch out weapons, your choice of gear will likely change too, either to add attack speed to hit the next breakpoint, or to replace things as some attack speed may become extra. Though with war strikes, I went with laying of hands to get the attack speed up and give us some extra damage for demons. Then I threw in Nosferatu's coil for attack speed on the belt, along with a ton of other nice mods, though on the cheap end you could go with gold wrap, which would still also be fairly good of a selection if you're going for magic find with this build, which is honestly surprisingly viable if you know where to add and remove specific gear. Our last source of attack speed is actually our helmet, using Andariel's Visage, since it has solid plus skills among other great mods, and with an attack speed jewel plopped in it, it will get us, with our mercenary, up to frankly ridiculous attack speeds. There are alternatives to get this attack speed, such as Treachery Armor, which then frees up your helmet slot for something else, or you could go with High Lord's Amulet and just put a faster attack jewel into whichever helmet you plan to use for a fairly similar effect. The reason I didn't go with High Lords though is twofold. We already have plenty of deadly and critical strike, and two because I wanted to use a Faith Mercenary instead of Reaper's Toll Mercenary. So this means I went with Atma Scarab for my answer to physical immunes. With the speed we're attacking, even at a 5% chance to cast, you will be triggering this regularly, and the small boost to attack rating among other mods is also pretty nice. And on the armor, since we're able to hit our attack speed goals elsewhere, I was able to use Fortitude for the chunky damage boost it provides, along with its other nice mods. Though if you're going budget, Treachery will be your friend here, and swap out your helmet for something like Harlequin Crest, or Steel Skull for Magic Find. Gyomes for Crushing Blow if you want that, or even Vampire's Gaze for Dual Leech and Damage Reduction. Though, speaking of dual leech, we do use our regular martial setup on rings, a dual leech ring with resist. Though, if you're going cheaper, you'll generally want mana leech here and focus on life leech on your helm, because it's just easier to get in each of those slots. And of course, we go raven frost for the obligatory cannot be frozen, it's kind of an auto grab item there. Lastly, we go Gore Rider. Since Crushing Blow and Bleed are nice, an extra Deadly Strike is nice but not required as we said earlier, you may say, but Alzerath, ranged attacks get a penalty on Crushing Blow, and you would be right. But since we're machine gunning, it still adds up fairly quickly, even after the penalty, and is especially nice on bosses. Now, as far as our mercenary, we packed her with solid gear as well for this. We used a dirty old faith to give us attack speed because I'm too cheap to remake it in a better bow, and I couldn't find my one for Amazon, so yeah, though those actually can be put on there. Though if you're making it from scratch, I'd probably go with a great bow, because it's kind of the go-to even after the changes, so it can be put on other characters. Though they have made it, as I said, so you can use a matriarchal bow on the rogues now, so if you're really only going to use it on Amazons and rogues, go ahead and make it in in a class specific bow. For the rest of her gear, it's Fortitude, because why not give her some damage, though I did consider switching it out for some life leech armor selections, since we're actually not using any leech on her at the moment. Instead, going for Wisdom on the helmet to provide her cannot be frozen, as well as Pierce Chance to take advantage of her splash shots. Though standard leech can work here too, since she's not really there for damage, but rather just the aura. As far as how we slotted in our numbers, stats are what you'd expect, with enough strength and dexterity for our gear, the rest into vitality, and without the chance to cast 
bug, this will be even more stable like this since the skills you're using are really, really cheap. As far as our skills, I ended up with 20 points into throwing mastery, not only for the damage and attack rating, but because it provides us with pierce and ammo conservation, which with War Shrike means we don't need to worry about ammo, which makes taking this even into players 8 a bit more reasonable, even if it's not broken fast there. In the combat skills, they're fairly predictable too. 20 into double throw and double swing, of course for the synergy, to maximize our double throw damage and attack rating, since it will be our main tool for killing. And also dropping one point into leap attack for mobility, not really worrying about the splash effect since it's just there to help us navigate, and we got one point into frenzy for supercharging our knife based machine gun, in the rare case that's necessary sometimes against some bosses or on higher player counts. Now we won't melee much so I'll skip berserk unless you're doing a throw melee high hybrid, in which case you could get away with it with certain specific setups. For War Cries, I went straight into battle orders and the usual 1-point wonders. This is just to pump up life and mana while we're going through the game. And if you do have a War Cry swap, you actually are pretty desirable in group games, especially whenever you have this setup that you can actually both kill and tank for the team, almost as good as a paladin, all while keeping your team alive better. Now I didn't go Grim Ward on this simply because I find two factors of it annoying. One, that it spreads the enemies out, and we want them clustered for speed, and two, that it doesn't affect the only monsters that can even remotely cause this build trouble, and that is uniques and champions. If they ever fix those issues with it, I could totally see using it to free up our amulet slot, just to do that little bit of extra damage and maybe get a little speed through High Lord's Wrath, but... Since it is based on a fear effect, an AI effect actually, any of them would work for this, it will not actually reduce any of the boss, champion, or any of that resistances because they're unable to be affected by it. But that aside, what do you think about this build? Did it give you new hope for the Barbarian, or is it still not quite where you want it to be? Mention your thoughts down below, and of course, keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzrath. Bye.